Morning everybody, Reggie Time here um, and today I'm bringing a video of myself 3 tabling 30 nl snap on 888 this isn't going to be part of my long running snap series on 888 this is going to be a video specifically focusing on playing very tight playing a pretty pretty damn nitty exploitative game and what I'm hoping to prove over the course of maybe a few videos is that um, we can still play really tight in modern poker particularly in games like snap where it's hoodless and um, and still make some some pretty so make, make the game profitable for ourselves I'm hoping to do this at 13 L 15 L and then 100 nil maybe over the course of three or six videos depending on depending on um the reaction it gets so I expect to get it I expect you to get not the best of reaction from regulars who are going to recoil in horror when they see just how tight i'm playing and just how exploitably i'm playing but that's kind of the point of the video i'm going to really overdo it on the tightness front i'm going to make a lot of Pretty tight folds there, uh, but I suppose pre flop and post flop. And um, I'm going to try and just uh, try to always have the goods. Or if I don't always have the goods, just try and find some really, some really good places to bluff and not just be randomly popping bets off left and right because someone's range may or may not be weak. Or they played a hand in a, in a weak manner kind of going to try and think everything out but from a, a really tight perspective um, it may be pretty boring for, for a lot of regulars who like to splash around and play a, a pretty normal you know, 25 sort of v-pip um, you know pretty like you, you lose you lose tag type thing you know, not not your, your nitty tag, not your sixteen, nineteen type of player. It's not your nineteen, sixteen type of player. More your twenty five, twenty type player. So here I'm just pot controlling twice against Nestor because I've got a hand with showdown value and I kind of want to show it down if I can. But then maybe go for some thin value on rivers. And we did get called there. I'm going to presume it was by a jack or something. And it was just by a seven. So, um, I mean, I'm not going to try and say that my checks, well, my checks did win me some extra money there, but I'm not going to say that's not a justification for making the checks at all. I was making the checks just because um, I didn't think I had a hand I could get too much value with thought I'd kind of had like a one one maybe two street hand depending on the opponent but that opponent's got the purple tag which indicates in my note system that he's pretty loose aggressive and um so in spots like that against loose aggressive players who are maybe capable of check raise bluffing or just check raising with with a pretty wide range um I don't really want to get blown off my hand I've got, I've got second pair I can maybe get one one and a half streets of value type thing Obviously, we can't get half a street, but I don't think it's a clear two street hand, which is why I said one and a half. I mean, I'm not obviously just for the record. I know we can't get an extra half street of value, but um, yeah, depending on the opponent, we can either get one or two streets there. So there's no reason to be betting the flop. You're going to see me take an awful lot of lines that could be construed or will be construed by many as weak tight. Um, I still think. Even though I don't coach a weak tight style, that's for sure, and I don't advocate it. I think learning to play tight and learn how to control the size of pots is a good place to start if you're watching these videos and you haven't been doing very well at poker. If you have been just ramming and jamming pots and you know trying to trying to make the all star plays that you see in videos, trying to make the all star plays that that you see on TV. Um, this is going to be a different way. It's going to be a different approach. Maybe for you, may not be for you. But if you have been struggling, I don't think it will do you very much harm to at least try this style for a little while. 
I'm probably going to fold here to CJ014 unless um, I have a note that makes me think I want to call. So with flats, pocket jacks, and then start donking flops. Doesn't really tell me too much other than he does donk for value. Um, I'm just going to fold here. Not too concerned if I'm being bluffed. I'm only being bluffed off one pair and not paying off. Learning to just not make curiosity calls and not make weak calls when we can't really call future streets. I keep sitting out down here. Um, 888 has been pretty buggy of late. Um, just going to fold here the pocket tens. So if the video does look a bit jumpy now and again, it will be because maybe I've disconnected for a, for a brief moment and um, or maybe I've disconnected for more than more than a few seconds. So therefore, I'm just pausing the video until I reconnect. So yeah, what we're going to try and focus on doing over this series is to not pay off at all. We're going to really, really try really hard to not pay off. And we're going to try really hard not to try not to blow too many pots with weak holdings. Be that by continuation betting too much or just flat out bluffing too much. We're going to try and play really, really straightforward and exploitably. And I'm hoping to demonstrate that we actually don't get exploited very much at these limits I mean, maybe I will maybe I'll get my ass handed to me I really don't think so though in this top hand I mean I could have gone for the bluff at some point but against three people someone's going to have some kind of pair I would imagine and all too often people do just not bet their hands of value enough and you end up value owning yourself so here we've been isolated so we isolated on table two. So I think what we'll do while we talk about this hand, it will sit out the next two hands and really talk through this hand. Um, I've got lots of options here. I don't know anything about Sven Herman, Sven the man. But I'm just going to shove, knowing or hoping that Palau is going to come along a decent amount of the time, which is going to pr provide some extra dead money in the pot against Sven the man. Um, I mean, Sven could very easily fold a hand like two jacks here or something. And Palau's going to come along and obviously he's going to add value to the pot for us. I mean, I'm really surprised that Sven the man stacks off there with ace jack suited. That means that it's clearly a horrendous call. Um, I didn't know anything about him, and I kind of just thought Palau was adding plenty enough extra value to the pot there to do to make sure it's absolutely fine, even though I expect. Both players to have, you know, some pretty decent hands there because I mean it's it's a pretty big pot. There's been a lot of money going in pre-flop. People are typically going around putting 17 blinds in pre-flop with not much. But Ace King's clearly way too strong to do anything but shove there. And um, Palau was just the icing on the cake versus Sven the Man's range. I, I kind of I got it wrong a little bit. I expect just Sven the Man to have the best hand. Um, so I got that the wrong way around and Palau had the best hand but theoretically I still think it's absolutely fine to expect the player with the green tag to um, to have the weakest hand there but still call therefore giving me way better odds on my flip against what I expect to be a flip against Sven most of the time and there's a chance there for just not see bet in the 8s we could have got someone up a 10 am I going to want a triple barrel on ace xx probably not Um so again, that's an example of there. I played pretty weak tight there. And then um, probably lost the minimum. But uh, maybe I could have won the pot. Maybe I could have won the pot. But people just start that into volume. What's, what's really going to happen there? I'm going to see about the flop. He's probably not going to fold for one C bet. And then I'm going to slow down anyway. So I'll probably just end up just losing a C bet more often than not there. <laughs> I'm um, just going to overlimp here behind Bongi because his stack size means that it's kind of bad. For, well, not bad to isolate, but I don't particularly want to isolate him because maybe I'll make it 120. It's not been much behind. We have like a really, really poor stack to pot ratio um, that isn't particularly favourable for me. So I'm just going to limp behind, try and see a flop, try and flop something nice, and then hopefully not have too many problems taking. Boggy stack when when he hits something. Um, flop quads here on table two. There really, is no reason to bet here. There's just nothing much I can call. I'm gonna keep checking behind here with the jack nine. Pretty much just giving up with the hand. 
we have a limited amount of showdown value. I mean, we're still losing to Queen High, obviously, but it's not beyond the realms of possibility that we win this pot. We didn't win the pot because we let him get there with an eight, but we were we were ahead. Um, I'm going to bet the turn here, just really small. I don't expect to get called very often, but we can't check too much. And he may be checking that like, pocket pair to me too, with the intention of calling. But no, he just folds. I mean, it's easy to get frustrated when you flop a monster with when, I flop a monster with quads. When you flop quads, um, but it's really just very hard for anybody to have anything. So I mean, it's it's, it's unlikely we're ever going to win too many huge pots with quads. And um, yeah, it was a nice one to make. A nice one to get a great screenshot of showing your buddies on the forums. Um, it's not a nice one when it comes to making money most of the time. Check back here again with the ace queen. I mean, in previous videos, I have C-bet here, and I do normally in my own games typically C-bet this spot. We have two overs, we have a backdoor flush draw, we have a backdoor straight draw. But um, the focus on this video is just to keep the pots as small as possible. And just try and just keep ourselves out of tons of trouble, keep all the pots small, unless unless we want them to get big ourselves. And then hopefully we're going to demonstrate how we can keep the pots small most of the time. But still be able to make big pots when we want the pots to be big. Poor Canoob here squeezing. Um, he's a register that regularly says hello to me. He's clearly not in a chatty mood today. Um, ignore the table four, by the way. That's just there for aesthetic purposes because I'm only three tabling, but I didn't want to be called there with with just my um, with my computer wallpaper at the back. I mean, I've got a beautiful picture of panoramic view of the town where I live as my as my Windows desktop picture wallpaper. Call it what you will. It really is a lovely picture, but it doesn't look good on videos. So um so I just I'm just grabbing this one there just to fill it up. So don't be expecting to see very much on that particular table. Here we're just gonna set mine with the sixes. Um I'm probably gonna check call with the two sixes. We're not in love with it clearly. I mean if he was C bets it's just very likely he's gonna have a better pair than me. But we do have the chance that he's just see bet in ace high here some of the time. Um, I mean, we've got to draw to a good shot. If we hit the good shot, there's a good chance we can make some some decent chips from him. Because if we make our good shot, there's a good chance he makes his good shot too. And when he bombs a turn like this, I'm just going to check fold and really not care very much about it. And who knows what my stats are going to come out at the end of this video. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out as something in the region of 17 slash 12. Not much of a 3 bet, maybe a 2% 3 bet. Um, maybe 45% C bet, that type of thing. Right, so midnight, what notes do we have on you? you so you slow play the nuts in position. Um, donk bluffs and trap with nuts out of position. So we're just going to call because of that read of him donking with bluffs and trapping with the nuts. We're just going to call again. And this is kind of going against the whole um, or ethos of the video so far. And now the question is do I value better or not? I think we do. I think we can bet for like seven dollars something here. Pretty gross if we get raised, but yeah. And we got paid off there. Not sure what we got paid off by us. Only check in a moment. Uh, presuming it hand like maybe. Well, I don't know because our read was we were, we we were calling before we look at the hand and be too result orientated. I was calling because I expect him to be bluffing a lot. So therefore, when he checks. It's kind of what bluffs can he have? 
that can cause what bluffs could he have had that he now calls with which kind of makes my bet based on the fact and we which is why I almost didn't want to bet because I was basing my calls on the fact that and not raising him for value because I thought he'd be bluffing a lot so if he is bluffing a lot then what can we get called by on the river so here there's absolutely no reason to raise again while we're running good in this video so we will check this um, check this hand out in a moment because I'm interested in what you call with because it might mean I have to alter my read again absolutely no reason to raise and we will show the river over a bit and if he has quads well or nine eight fuck our lives I mean, maybe he was going to have a thin value there with two aces or kings. If he has fought the two aces or kings there, I mean, congratulations to him. I didn't expect, well, I don't know. I mean, he should have always fold there. When I raised that river, he should really fold aces and kings and things. Um, but I didn't expect too many micro six players to, to be making those type of folds. So he actually had Jack King this time, so... Maybe I can go back in and alter my note now to say that maybe he, and I didn't mean to pop that there, I meant to just three exit. Maybe we can go back in now and, and alter the note. I'm not going to do it right now. But I um, don't bluffs and traps with nuts and don't bluffs. So maybe I can now type don't bluffs and don't bluffs. pairs so now we know that his donking range I just quickly adjusted my note there so now his donking range now it includes top pair and had I known that before I would have certainly made a way bigger bet on the river there if I thought if I thought at the time his donking range includes top pair type hands um, I mean, 10 are very standard open, clearly. But based on, I was thinking whether to open or not, based on the premise of the video, which is weak tight, trying to play like a weak tight style. And um, stay out of spots with people like this Neto character who plays very loose aggressive. What was my note there? I noticed it had like an LOL type note in there. The LOL typically means that, it means I think, I mean, I don't put LOL to talk to myself like that laughing out loud type thing. It's there to prompt me to think that perhaps someone's taken a bad line. Uh, which is why I put it. I put it to, to make myself double check the note. Here we're going to start by check calling against Glenn TD. Um, just in the interest of controlling the size of the pot when he, he checks back the flop. I think we're pretty much always going to have a winner here, unless he's got some kind of two pair. So we're just going to bet fold half pot here, and he did fold. Wow, my kitten's going absolutely nutty again. I don't think you can hear her. She's quite light on her feet, and I do now have a headset that back that does cancel out quite a lot of uh, background noise so midnight here is checked so I'm checking it means he probably has some kind of made hand or maybe a total give up who knows but the read earlier was that he checks um, nut, nutted hands out of position now I'm going to go for some value on the turn because ultimately the guy is a fish <clears throat> so I, I do want to be trying to get value um, let me just bet fold this river unless it does something a min raise or something because just because we have a note it doesn't mean we always have to get married to it I mean that note on midnight could be months old he could have significantly improved he could have changed the way he plays lots of things can change and um, we do have to make sure our notes are quite fluid and that we're not just like using the same note forever when players clearly aren't the same player anymore 
Um, I would normally fold 10 9 suited versus under the gun. But when, you know, every man and his dog calls, I think we just have a chance to call and try and flop huge. We don't, so we just be check folding now. Still continuing with the check forward line with the 10 9, no reason to deviate from the plan. And who knows what is going on here? I mean, I'm presuming that both these guys have a pair, probably of aces. Wow, they're all in the pot. So let's actually play this one out. So we'll close that off and we'll. We'll fold and watch and just see what happens. Because I'm quite interested. The flop like that checks through, then everyone just calls the turn. It's hands like this where we can usually get some decent reads on people if it goes to showdown. I would expect to bet. I would expect Spanek to bluff a lot of the time here and value bet pretty well a lot of the time. But surprise if it just checks through. Spanek's too too aggressive to just let that check through there. And um, yes, yeah, so we had Demon basically. Slow played top set multi way on a wet board, which is clearly not good poker. Um, when you've got top set on a multi way board on that kind of board, there the 8 9 king, you're gonna get all kinds of calls by all sorts of things. Slow playing is just insane. I mean, tons of bad cards that can come off. Um, I mean, he's five handed there. And he hasn't seen it, his top set. And he's got paid now, so he's probably loving it. I mean, he didn't value bet the river. And he just checked calls. So that, I'm assuming he was bluff catching. Um, I don't really know what to say about that, to be completely honest with you. Um, yeah, not good. Not good at all. But again, it does kind of make the point slightly that I've been trying to make that we shouldn't be or we're not that it shouldn't be when we're not really that good at hand reading and understanding our opponents we shouldn't be firing random bets out left and right because people are just doing insane things like being too trappy now and again I'm not saying that's a reason to to never see bet bluff etc etc but um, while we're just trying to get our house in order it's another reason not to not to just try and win every pot that we get into because people will check. I mean, look at something. He's checked back top set. Spanix checked back the net flush draw. A lot of people checking a lot of hands there, where you know a lot of money could conceivably have gone into the pot. So people checking doesn't necessarily mean that the week. I'd say a lot of the time it means. Um, it means almost nothing when people check because just who knows. Poor slot poker these days, in my opinion, has become really quite passive. Everyone's like, a, well, not everyone, but lots and lots of players are that really aggressive pre-flop. And then poor slop for whatever reason, and I think it's because people just aren't really good poor slop. Poor slop is, tends to be pretty nitty. Um, I've got to be called in two spots here. Obviously, right now, I'm really pleased with the situation. We're going to be betting again for value. But I will, if I get raised here by Glenn, I will be folding. Unquestionably. And up against Palau. And now that's a really bad river. It's a really, really bad river. So I'm just going to check and probably fold. Unless he just prices me in. Yeah, wow. He's just checked about the Jack King there. Jeepers, creepers, people are making some awful checkbacks. Some awful checks. I mean, he just needs to value bet there. Um, we're going to fold to Palau. When he makes this raise, I just don't think I'm going to be good anywhere near enough at the time. And try and flop a set with the sevens. So if we're going to flop a set, we may as well flop the toppest one. And now we're going to go for a. 
I'm going to go for a check raise. Just because I don't want too many bad cards to come off. There's lots of cards that I mean I can... Wow, and now he's going for it. So he's put either has an overpair here. Or a set himself. Or a very, very strong draw. I'm just going to shove because I just don't think he's going to fold. That often when he takes this line. And we are super deep. And I don't really want to see a club come up. And he has folded. Wow, that does surprise me. Um, I didn't expect him to fold. That when people take the check raise, sorry, the big raise like that, it's his raise to $14. Mm. Over, what was, you know, reasonable check raise. I check raised him out a fair amount. It wasn't like I made a small check raise. Um, I mean, maybe he's just folded two aces, two kings there. Again, that would be an insanely good fold. At these levels, it's not a fold they expect people to be making. I expect there someone to have pocket kings, pocket aces, or um, two high club combination, and just get all the beans in. I'm surprised he folded. Tempting to three bet netto there, but um, I think we'll just call instead in keeping with the video of trying to control sizes of pots, particularly mean against under the gun. There, if that was netto's put on open, clearly I'd be three betting, but against netto's under the gun range, I'm um, more happy just to see a flop in keeping with how the video's been going and. And we're just going to check for this river here. And no, we're not going to be too concerned about it because we don't beat very much. I mean, I'm sure there'll be some people watching this video right now that'll be absolutely tearing their hair out at how I'm playing. But it hasn't prevented me getting... Um value when I've had my big hands and this isn't I mean it's, it's removed from how I play don't get me wrong I mean of course it is I don't usually play this this weak and this tight but I mean I don't think my image is going to be so poor in these games I mean, I'm still going to be seen as a pretty tight player I would imagine because I just do, I just am just I'm a tight player. I will be one of the more tight regulars. I mean, I'm taking it to an extreme here with how weak and how tight I'm playing. But, um, yeah, I kind of lost my train of thought here. Do I want to pay off this bet? I mean, I'm almost certainly going to lose, but it's 30 cents. There we go. Um, yeah, so completely lost my train of thought there about. My image. Yeah, I mean, I don't think my image is contributing too much to the action that I've got because it's been against pretty much uh, unknown players most of the time. Um, this is one bob where we just are going to see but because we've just got so much equity that um, it clearly can't be a mistake. It can't even be close to a mistake. Um... I think betting the turn would be a mistake though, when we get called on that board texture. And we're definitely going to have enough odds to check call more size bets, that being one of them. And then we're going to try and spike an ace or a queen and try and show our hand down on a flush. And if we flush, if we do hit the flush, we're going to donk. Um, apart from if we hit the flush, that pairs the board. And then we are still going to donk and we're going to donk fold. Because I don't think he's going to race me with a flush here. Oh, he's been raced. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I mean, does he really just have a full house here? I mean, I think he probably just has a full house. Um, but we're getting insane pot odds. Can afford the pair of tens there. So he's going to call and expect to lose a lot. And why did have a worse flush? 
I mean, if he'd have made a much larger race there, I almost certainly would have folded. So, yeah, that's, that would surprise me. I, mean, I was really, well, it wasn't close to folding it, but I mean, I, if he'd have made a 3x race there, if he'd have made it 21 instead of 13, I almost certainly would have folded but um, no, I certainly can't forget in that price. And once I saw the race, I mean, I should have called it quicker, to be honest with you. It was a bit of a slow roll. It wasn't intentional. I was just, um, I was just trying to just um, put some thoughts down whilst it was before I made the call. Um, so if you do think I slow you there, if you're watching the video, do apologise. Wasn't my intention. And were you the guy who had just won the pot off? I didn't know you weren't. So let's see what no we've got on Pedden before we decide that we're going to continue here with the two jacks. There's a more than reasonable chance I'm just going to fold here. Semi lag rayish type. We're going to call. I'm going to try and play some flops. I mean, the Queen's not ideal. I kind of wanted to just see a no overcard type board and then maybe call down. I'm much, 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 much less inclined to call down now. And the question here is, can we just call once? I don't think he's going to continue with Ace-King on the turn. If I call here and we lose. And we're getting a pretty decent price on his bluffs. So we're going to call once and now, obviously now we're going to be completely done with it. That is just... That's the cherry on the ice, that's the cherry on the cake, should I say. The king coming on the turn there. I mean, I could have folded at two different points there. I'm quite disappointed with myself that I didn't fold in one of the two points. But I think at both points, calling was a decent option at both times too. So um, I'm not going to beat myself up too much. But I think we certainly could have folded pre-flop because I just don't think people are squeezing that much. Uh, but because my note said he was like semi-like reg kind of thought, well, I need to peel one, and then when the ace and the king didn't hit, I thought, well, I need to peel again. And, um, yeah, then we just lost anyway, so, go us. So let's have a look at the note on this guy, flat three, but our position was six, six deep. Don't care, six x thing. Give up. I'm not going to three bet here with it. Sorry, four bet with the ace king. Um, not sure what much good can come of it, and we're just going to call down. I'm going to hope he doesn't have them aces or them. Ki wow, 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 wow. Wow. I mean, to make this call, I have to pre as ace king. Sit out and think about this for a moment. Think I'm going to fold. I mean, do I think he's doing this with pocket queens? No. Do I think he could do this with ace king? Yes, absolutely. Um, king queen, some of the time, aces. I just think he's going to have aces a lot of the time here. She just gives up with his plus there according to that read. I'm just going to fold. And, um, I'm just going to put him on aces there. I kind of thought aces, pocket kings, pocket aces. I mean, maybe he's bluffing. It seems insane to me that somebody would, would bluff in that way. Maybe I've made a tight fold there, but it's in keeping with the video. I think we need to be avoiding pain. We talked right from the start about how we want to be avoiding paying off in these games and I think um, I don't know, I feel a little bit dirty folding that but I think it's probably, I mean it, it can't be a terrible fold, the pot's really small it's, I mean we need him to have a lot of bluffs there and a lot of king queen I mean if we think we can usually only chop there and then beat some random bluffs that he doesn't have very often and maybe king queen um, 
No, I mean, the, the more I think about it, the more I talk it through, the more I'm really pleased with the fold, actually. Um, but I guess it's a fold that you know, a bunch of people don't make. So, yeah, overall, pleased. Well, not pleased with the outcome, but pleased with my play. This is Glenn Toe, who earlier, if you remember, he just called twice in position with top pair and then didn't value bet river trips. It pot control a turn here. Probably call the river. Expect to lose a decent amount to ace, queen, king, queen. But also beat quite a few, you know, some random bluff so you can have the missed and when he was best 90 cents. It was a really easy call and he was in value betting. So we could have maybe got some more value on the turn there, but probably not too much. As you see him folding the small pairs in early position. Um, don't think they're particularly profitable to be completely honest with you. If there's fish in the pots, then of course they are. If there's just regulars in the left in the pot, it's probably not profitable. Or if it is, it's just barely profitable. Some people would no doubt argue, black and white, that it's super profitable there. I don't believe it is. I've had an open challenge out. Well, not my own personal open challenge. I heard another player make this open challenge once. It's one I've made since uh, to people to show me sample size where they're winning with small pairs in under the gun over like a really large sample size. I'm sure some people are, without question. But uh, no one's actually shown me yet. So we've been limp re-raised here. Love snap call. Wow, what an awful screen name. Um, we're not going to fold. We're going to call for now. Um, I'm already very nervous that he just has two aces or two kings. One of the hands that you could conceivably be doing it with that we now don't beat. Um, again, I'm just going to call once here. And then fold to any further action. Didn't notice that float two pair down here on the bottom table. And now we're not going to fold. Now we've hit the queen. And we're just going to pray he's got aces with a spade. Or oh, aces without a spade, ideally. And now we're just going to shove it in his face. He did have the aces with a spade. And I guess that's kind of unlucky for him. That turn can't come. So the note that we're going to put on this guy is limp is a UTG play straight forward post flop. Nothing much else to learn from that apart from that one note. But it does mean that maybe when I go back to playing my normal style and not play my weak tight style that um that I maybe wouldn't isolate his limbs quite so lightly. Uh, here I think we have to pay off this river bit. I think he's gonna have an ace a lot of the time. I think we have to pay off we check twice our hands very under repped and he can just be doing things like that. So as you can see we've negotiated this session so far and we've only had one really tough spot and even that hasn't cost us a huge amount of money. Uh, because we just made a pretty not tight, I'm not even going to call it a tight lay down. A call here because a few good shot possibilities opened up on the turn. And not going to call the river unless he bet's really small and he just had two jacks. So as you can see, we've negotiated this session with the minimum of fuss we'd really have. Um, we maybe missed some value in a couple of spots. We've maybe missed a few opportunities to pick up some small pots with some bluffs. But ultimately, when you're coming from a position of being a losing player or uh, you're new to the games, missing the occasional bluff or missing the occasional thin value bet or folding to the occasional bluff, all these small things are just small factors that we can eventually put the spit and polish to our game and then fix them up but in the short term um, I'm hoping I've demonstrated that and um, just 
break this point off for the moment whilst we just treat this min dunk like a check. And then, yes, yeah, so I'm hoping that the point of made in this video, the whole point of the start of the video was we can negotiate sessions by just playing pretty weak type fit or fold, ABC, call it what you will poker and get through more sessions and still make money at these lower limits. That you could you could do this and just play this style time and time and time and time again. And just print money up to fifteen L in my opinion. Uh, we could do better than that obviously and um it's we I do encourage my students to to do better than that and I try and encourage myself to do better than that too. But from a perspective of just showing how easy it is to just continually just keep pots small unless you want them to get big and just make some tight folds and not care too much about it i hope from that point of view it's been um it's been an eye-opening video for some of you we've been going 40 minutes now so i am going to wrap the video up um but i will be making another video like this because number one i've really enjoyed it and i run like jesus and number two i think it's important that we demonstrate it you know several times to people because there will be people who doubt this and think oh it's just wrangled in the video you know we got ace king versus jacks and got so ace king versus queens and got some more on to put another hundred blinds in with jacks with ace jack etc and that is true i have ran well in this video but um the key point is i haven't i've been in one spot i think where i've been like shit i don't know what to do i've just kept myself out of trouble for the entire video and it's really easy to do and um, I think it's something that a lot of people could certainly try and do themselves. Just not calling with things like 8-7 pre and get yourself in some pretty marginal spots. Just not calling 3 bets. Just not 3 bet enlightened. Just do all the things that put us in marginal spots. You know, our pre-flop things that we think we're doing okay. Oh, it's, it's fine to do this, it's fine to do that. Until the flop hits and you're like, shit, now what do I do? Just cut all those things out whilst you are losing money at poker. Um, get yourself, turn yourself into a winning player first. Then start adding those things back into your game once you're more equipped to deal with them. That's kind of been the point of the video. I hope I've got the point across pretty well. And I hope some of you have um, benefited from it. If you would like to talk to me about receiving some coaching... Please do get in touch. All of my contact details are either in the annotations in the video or in the comment section below. Please do get in touch. Um, I'd love to hear from you. I'm currently only working with around 15 students, so I've definitely got room for some more. If you want to come and join the team, you know how to get in touch. Please do. So we'll just, well, I was going to say we'll just play the ace queen out. So we'll make these pocket nines our last hand sit out everywhere else I'd like to thank 888 for um, for actually managing to keep the games going for 40 minutes which has been unusual of late and we're just going to fold here to midnight and pretty much that's going to be that so thanks very much thanks very much for watching I hope you've got plenty from it I've really enjoyed making the video and um, I will post my stats in the comments section of the video and in ready after this if anyone wants to know if you ask if you want to know what my stats were please just ask um because i don't know i'm gonna guess they were pretty weak tight but um yeah if you want to know ask and i shall provide so, but that's all for now until the next time take care and bye for now